This week I'm working on a dresser and it's kind of crammed in with my other furniture that's called my on deck area. <laughs> well, you know, sometimes the way my store operates, I don't always have a lot of room. So I'm actually leaving it in place. And this is a trick of mine. And I'm showing you some of the pictures of, you know, the inspection of it all. But sometimes I'll work on a piece of furniture and do the front completely and then do the rest of it. I know it's really weird, but I'm removing a uh, trim here that uh, wasn't in good shape. You could see some of it was missing. So I'm just removing that. Um, yeah, I know I drive people crazy when I jump around, but it's not just for the sake of the video. It's sometimes just the way I operate. <laughs> I get inspired and I really want to see my vision come to life. And then I can you know, look at the rest of it and say, well, all I need to do is the sides and the top then and I'm done. So, you know, everybody works differently. And here I'm using some Dixie Bell mud. The repairs were very minimal and I'm just uh, filling in some cracks. So really not much that was necessary, at least for the repair part. Now that missing trim, um, that opened up a whole other can of worms because <laughs> I saw uh, potential with using some molds, uh, some decorative molds, and I went for it. And in the beginning, I had this vision of using one of Dixie Belle's new decoupage papers with the ballerina on it. So pretty. So I am using some IOD molds and some amazing casting resin here and making some corner pieces for my mold. Now, originally I thought I was also gonna make some long pieces as well. So this stuff is truly amazing. You just put part A and part B in, mix it, it'll get cloudy, then it'll get clear. When I use clay, I can never get this particular mold to come out right because it has a lot of little delicate, intricate parts, but yet I love it. I think it's really cool for a corner. So um, at this point in time, I was also considering using a decorative long piece of molding instead of the wood molding that was originally there. But I decided as pretty as it would be, that that would be a lot of work. So these molds set up in about 20 minutes and you can see here, it's not real hard, it's flexible. And the longer it sits, it'll get a lot harder. So, um, it's good to put it on if you're going to mold it to something when it's flexible, but otherwise you can just uh, leave it set. So see how pretty this mold is? All of those details. I just love it. So I'm just kind of doing a little prep on the piece to get ready to accept those molds. I am sanding off of the, off the Dixie mud that I used in the corners to get it um, smooth. So here I am um, trying the mold on and originally I thought I would put it in the corner where the original molding was but then i thought about that hardware and i thought i better try that on and i'm really glad i did because i ended up moving the molding up to the whole corner you can see a little better the whole corner of the drawer then that made a lot more sense so um that's the plan and i am using e6000 and I guess I'm touching up just a little bit more. But I'm gonna use some E6000 glue and I'm actually using the black formula. No particular reason why I did that, just simply uh, because I had some there. <laughs> I'm being careful so that when I position it, that the, um, molds don't go over the sides of the drawers because that would cause problems closing the drawers obviously
So it has a really good bond and I kind of went over to the left pretty far so I'm just uh, taking off that extra glue that's smeared and I'm going to use some tape to hold the, the mold in place until it dries, until the glue dries. And again, you want to make sure that you have it away enough from the corners that opening and closing the drawers will not affect your mold. You don't want to snap it off. So here I'm trying on for size the original molding and I'm adding the rest of the moldings. So sometimes you just dry fit things before you put them in place just to see how they're going to look. And also you want to make sure that the molds are all in the same direction. Um, I think I messed that one up at first and then had to take it off or you're seeing the edited version maybe. <laughs> Either way, just make sure they're all going the way they're supposed to go. You don't want to apply one upside down. Remember, I was missing some of that molding. So here's the solution to that problem. I'm using a hot glue gun. This is a high temp glue gun and you want to use uh, the big sticks for this because this is um, you, you want to make sure that that glue just keeps flowing. So you're just going to cover the entire piece. You can spray it with some Pam if you want. Um, I typically get the same result either way. Um, it, it'll pull some of the leftover varnish or lacquer, whatever is on the piece off and that's okay. So you just want to completely cover and also I'm going to be coming back and making sure there's no holes and also giving it a good, um, I'll say like a border on the, the sides and the all around it because you're going to be pouring that two part epoxy in there and you want to make sure there's enough to hold it in. So add that and you know those um, IOD and uh, Prima molds, I will flip them over because that silicone is just a perfect thing to pour these glue on. So now I'm taking that piece of molding out and it really comes right out. So like I said, it takes some of that residue uh, from the varnish, but that's okay. So then we're going to repeat the same thing that we did when we were pouring it in the IOD mold and it's just the same two part epoxy and we're just going to pour it in the mold that we made. This is the part where you want to make sure that you didn't have any holes in your mold. <laughs> So while that's setting up, I'm coming back. There were two nice long pieces um, that I was able to use. Originally, the first one was chipped, but now that I put this molding on, I'll be able to cut it down so I can use those long pieces. So I'm just marking where I want to cut it, and I just use my miter box and just uh, cut that off so that it fits. And I was a little shy on the one side, so I used... Um, Dixie Mud to fill it in. No big deal. But I'm using that same E6000 to apply the trim. Goes right back where it was. And now it's time to unmold what I uh, poured. And again, some of that um, residue transfers onto the new mold but again no big deal we're just going to be painting it so that turned out really good so i made enough that i needed and glued them in place i used the original piece that i used for the mold and let them dry and now i am using dixie bell's boss in gray um, and when i cleaned this piece and i did use dixie bell's white lightning to clean it um, I could tell it was going to be a bleeder, but 
Um, it really doesn't matter for the rest of my piece because I'm painting it dark, but for this, I wanted to make sure that I had a light background. Um, so I'm just kind of holding it up for size. It's such a beautiful decoupage paper from Dixie Bell from their Bells and Whistles collection. And I am just using, um, I'm tearing the edges of it because I'm going to be painting in around it and I just kind of want to blend in with the paint. So this would be better done with painter's tape. I'm kind of taking a little chance here and I just used a little masking tape on there just to hold it in place. Um, but I'm definitely not going to use a whole lot here, but I just want to make sure that I don't shift um, anything because I need to tear out a little section for the handles and you want to make sure that your drawers are in place correctly you could also take because these drawers meet and there's no gap in between them you could also take them out lay them on the floor and do this if or a table if it's easier um, but like I said my piece was kind of stuck in with all that that furniture around it not that i couldn't remove it because obviously i did eventually anyway but just um because of the amount of furniture i had and because of the traffic flow in my store that's where i chose to leave it so now i am using clear coat in flat to apply this transfer this is i'm going to be using this as my decoupage medium you could also use Mod Podge, but I love using Dixie Bell's flat um, or satin sometimes, depends on what I'm doing. So I'm just kind of going across the top here and just pressing it into place. We'll get a little more detailed as we go, but this is kind of like what I call just kind of basting it on. <laughs> going to get rid of that tape get a little more of that medium on there and start to apply that top now we'll get rid of that bottom tape and I just pull it up and just kind of uh, coat everything down and then begin to apply it so I kind of do it in a cross pattern now you see a big wrinkle forming um, it's not as bad as it looks because <laughs> some of it was kind of gapping down but you know what wrinkles don't bother me especially with this treatment because I want this to sort of look like it's an oil painting so um, having a little texture in that will remind you of the texture that you see in oil paintings so wrinkles are not bad um, even if you had it perfectly flat there's a lot of fibers in this decoupage paper anyway so it already has its own texture so um, all good there and I'm happy with it so um, now I want to take a blade and just slice in between those drawers you want to make sure that you're able to open the drawers easily and now i have a fan deck in my store which is um, an accurate representation of the silk colors so if you um, can get a hold of one of these your retailer should be able to get one for you um, and they're available on the site i always have my affiliate link in the description box but i decide to go with black sands which is sort of a gray black and i am painting all around the uh, decoupage piece now after it dries it does dry um, a little differently than it goes on wet um, but after i do that then i decide i'm actually going to use a little anchor which is a darker black um, and blend in a little bit i've never blended with silk paint so this is a, a first time for that um, but i also used i had some endless shore which is a white color and I kind of used that with her skirt and also then 
brought my black brush in and blended that. So that turned out really well because I had to sort of extend her skirt out to the rest of the frame. So now you see I'm using that anchor color and just kind of going around and uh, blending. So I already put some more black sands on. And then we're just kind of blending those two colors together. So I have them both on, have them wet, and now I have the best dang brush and I'm just kind of lightly feathering around there. Now normally if I were using chalk mineral paint, I would grab a mister bottle to help blend the colors, but um, with silk that's not necessary. Um, now I am taking um, some some of the moonshine metallics in my favorite color, which is Steel Magnolia. And I'm just kind of dry brushing. Oh, and if you notice in the middle of the top drawer, I also added another uh, molding. So um, that was, I think, from the same set that these corner pieces are from. So just... I know I didn't show that part, but I decided that it needed a little extra something something in the middle there. So I'm also just kind of going along very uh, painterly style, um, just kind of dry brushing around the edges of those drawers and in all the details with that beautiful moonshine metallics. Now I could have used a gilding wax, um, but I just love this color. It's just, um, to me, I, it's like a champagne color. Um, but it, like I said, it's called Steel Magnolia, so it's kind of silver-based. Um, but it's not a bright silver. It almost is a silver-gold mix. I know I'm going into a lot of detail to explain that. But <laughs> but uh, the beauty of this paint is it kind of goes on, you know, you see the shimmer, but, you know, your first coat... It just keeps building and building. It gets better and better with every co coat you put on. It just gets more brilliant. And I just love it. And yes, I'm still working in my little uh, restricted area. But we're going to bust it loose here real soon. how pretty that's turning out so now I pulled it out and I did finish cleaning don't worry um, it, you know it, everybody makes their own rules it all turns out in the end there's no set order that you have to do things in so um, then like I said when I come back the next time it's just so easy for me then just to say all I have to do is paint the sides and the top and I'm done so um, I didn't do anything special on the sides, um, no stencils or extra tricks. I, I really felt like I wanted that beautiful ballerina to be the focus of this piece. using a Dixie Belle French tip brush which is great to get in the details but it also when you have a lot of paint on it it fans out nicely so it was good for that uh, side area as well so I'm painting the top now and I did definitely did a scuff sand on these pieces um, that's recommended with the silk A lot of people do um, a scuff sanding no matter what kind of paint they're using. With a chalk mineral paint, it's not necessarily necessary. It just depends on what you're doing and what surface you're working on. And I realized I missed a little on the side and I 
catch up with it on the second coat. So we have uh, Dixie Belle's flannel and we have um, Suzanne's garden in the Big Mama's butter. Big Mama's butter is kind of a wax and it's wonderful for putting inside drawers. I just love that flannel scent and the rose sometimes is a little overpowering, but yet I thought that for a little girl's piece, I wanted it to be kind of floral. So I mixed flannel and rose together and I ended up putting a little more rose in it than the flannel sort of smells like aftershave. I used it on my Zoltar piece, um, but you know, I, there's nothing that says you can't mix the two together. And I ended up getting a really nice scent out of it. So I, after cleaning the drawers, I use it inside the drawers. It helps condition them and it just makes them smell yummy. And then I do on the underside of the drawers, I use it on the drawer glides. And of course I use it on the inside of the dresser as well. So I use it a little sparingly. I cleaned inside um, and just did it on the, the drawer runners because the smell of the Big Mama's butter, it only lasts so long, like maybe about six weeks, um, but it can be a little overpowering if you do it too much in the beginning, especially with the rose and the flannel. So um, there's also an orange grove scent too, and you can't go too much with that in my book. <laughs> There's also unscented. You can use essential oils if you want and get your own scents like lavender. I wish you could paint this fast. So everything's getting a second coat now. Now I just touched up a little bit on the front. Okay, so I'm taking that Moonshine Metallics and I'm doing um, in steel, steel Magnolia and I'm doing that little detail piece right at the top. Now, all along, my heart was wanting to paint pink, but I didn't. So right now, I'm taking just the residue that was left on the Big, Big Mama's Butter brush, and I brushed that. So now, I'm getting to do my heart's content, <laughs> and I'm really a mixologist today, but I'm taking the gemstone mousse in diamond, and I'm mixing it with gemstone mousse and garnet. I'll get my pink one way or another because garnet is a rich, deep red and diamond is a silver. This makes a beautiful, beautiful mauve pink. And like I said, it made my heart happy. So <laughs> I hope it works for you too. Again, didn't go over the top on the details with this piece. It's a fancy piece already. I think with the moldings, it really, you know, added a lot to it. So I just, um, you know, wanted it to be really simply elegant, I guess you could say. So I just didn't do a lot of extra stuff um, on this drawer sides or anything or on the sides of the dresser or anything. Just uh, so check this out. I'm using the soft brush and again, dry brushing over this hardware that was already done in the steel magnolia. I love it. <laughs> Just brings enough of the pink color in to, uh, to satisfy that. There's just a little tiny bit of pink in the, um, the decoupage paper itself on the ballerina. So remember what it looked like? Are you ready for the big reveal? There it is. I think it's just gorgeous. If you have a little girl that's a ballerina, taking ballet lessons or an adult, whatever, it's just gonna be at home in a, a woman's room or young lady's room. It's just a beautiful piece.
Thank you so much for watching today. If you like this video, how about giving it a thumbs up and also share it with your friends. If you haven't subscribed, you'll want to do that so you don't miss anything. Visit us at LaVintageDecor.company and on Instagram we're LaVintageDecor and on Facebook we're LaVintageDecor Altoona. Stay well.